about uh, force vectors again, and we're expanding our situation and hoping that uh, we can figure out the net force and some other things going on with a falling object. So here we have a box, and there is a force acting on the box of 980 newtons. The box is falling. There is another force acting on the box of 25 newtons. And first, let's talk about what is the net force. Okay, as we learned the other day, we're going to take all of the forces that are acting on the box and combine them so that we get the net force. And in this situation, we have one force that is acting downward. We have another force that's acting up. So they're acting in opposite directions. So when we combine them, we're going to do that by subtraction because they're counteracting each other. So 980 minus 25 is going to give us a net force of 955 newtons. And we also need to include a direction for our net force, so we're going to put an arrow indicating that the net force operates down because the 980 newton force that we considered is much, much larger than the upward force. The next thing that we want to know is what is the weight of this box? Well, if you look at it and you think about what weight is, we know that weight always acts straight down towards the center of the Earth. And so when I look at my diagram, it's obviously not going to be this force, but the weight is going to be the one indicated by an arrow drawn straight down. So our weight is 980 newtons. I'm also wanting you guys to figure out what is the air resistance. This is an object that is falling through the air. And so there is going to be a frictional force due to air resistance. And because friction forces always counteract the motion of an object, we know that the, ball, uh, the box is falling. And so air resistance, which is a form of friction, is going to counteract that falling. So this one has to be the air resistance. So air resistance is 25 newtons. Are we able to determine whether the box is accelerating? Well, we know that there's a net force of 955 newtons downward. And we know that acceleration occurs any time that there is a net force that's not zero. So we definitely have a net force. It's 955. So we're definitely going to have acceleration. Now, we don't know yet how much acceleration, but we do know that we have some. So we say, yes, there's going to be acceleration. And we're just going to put an arrow indicating that the acceleration is going to be oriented down because acceleration is always in the direction of the net force. So how do we find acceleration? Well, there's some things that we need to know. First of all, uh, in class today, we are discussing Newton's first and second law. And Newton's second law says that acceleration of an object equals the net force acting on an object divided by its mass. Well, that's not helpful yet because we don't know what the mass is. We can find mass if we know an object's weight and we know the acceleration due to gravity because weight is a measure of gravitational force. So in this case, the weight is the 980 newtons that we've already seen. And I have to tell you what the acceleration due to gravity is because it's always the same thing for objects falling towards the Earth. And that's 9.8 meters per second squared. So if we have weight, which is 980 newtons, 
and we have acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared, then we can calculate the mass. So the mass is going to be 980 divided by 9.8, and it just so happens that that comes out to a nice even 100 kilograms. So our mass is 100 kilograms, but we still don't know exactly how fast this object is falling. And you might say to yourself, well, Miss Goff, it's going to be falling at a rate of 9.8 meters per second squared. And that would be true if we didn't have the air resistance. So objects will fall to the surface of the Earth at an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared if there's no air resistance. But we all know that there is an atmosphere here on Earth, and things falling through that air are going to be slowed down by the air resistance. So our acceleration that we get for this falling object is actually going to be a little bit less than the 9.8 meters per second squared. So let's now use this equation to solve for what our actual acceleration will be. Acceleration is our net force, which we've calculated as 955 newtons, divided by our mass, which we just calculated, 100 kilograms. And because this is a nice, even 100, dividing by something that ends in two zeros, it's easy if I just consider, all right, I've got two zeros, so I can do the division in my head if I will just remember to move the decimal point two times, one for each zero that I'm dividing with. So we get 9.55 meters per second squared. So we can add a little bit of information here now. Is the box accelerating? Yes, the box is accelerating. Which way? It's accelerating down. And its acceleration is equal to 9.55 meters per second squared. Again, it's not going to accelerate at 9.8 meters per second squared because there is air resistance acting on the box.